oh, right now I think we're killing it. The public is just finding out about us, <laughs> and now they're they're coming on and they're looking at. There's like people are watching for up, upwards of four seconds. You know, it makes me think. That makes me think to go. Ooh, yeah. upwards of four seconds before they bail. Nice. And, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, this was a mistake. We shouldn't have watched this. Oh, they don't my, have their shit together yet." Oh my ears! All right, so this one uh, we have to have. Uh, this one it, we're, I'm going to explain. All right. Uh, and then we're going to theme song it, and mm-hmm. then we're going to do the show like we do, and then we're going to end it with a theme song, right? Pretty yeah. Much? Sounds like a good plan. All right, I'll do that then. So uh, we'll do, uh, just so I can find the edit to start the show, I uh, will do like a uh, now. Theme song? No, not theme song. Oh, we're starting. I'm doing an open thing before the theme song to set up the show. I'm so fucking stupid. You're right? I was just trying to explain that to you, Kev. <laughs> Pay attention. We're going to listen to this. The, well, listen all the way through. You're going to know how this show's going to work, right? This is a big time. To- and, and you know what, Kev? I'm not, I'm not. Uh, riding you you're the only one here i appreciate you coming (laughs) right i'm holding i'm holding back this is an emotional day for me and it's a very emotional day because i know that this is the beginning of the big day the horizon's here the end is coming okay i've been dreading this day for upwards of a decade Mm -hmm. i've had it circled on my calendar this saturday the big day that that changes everything and it's. I, I hoped it would never come. I knew it would, and it finally is. Right. And I need to deal with it, Kev. I need a person. I need a friend. Right. I need someone to talk this through with. I need uh, to kind of like try to make heads or tails of of, of what I'm going to have to do to deal with this new reality. Well, I'd be happy to help you make heads or tails of it. Well, now that we've got, I've got your support. Yep. And I won't bust your balls for not listening to me at the beginning. I forgive you already for that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Let's put that under the bridge and uh, move on with our glorious theme song. Welcome to the Dutch Hall. We have a great night here in Pine Grove in a pool shed in some guy's backyard. It happens to be me. Uh, We're sitting here, me and uh, the MVP of Season 8, my good friend, Kevin Van Dungeon. Oh, thank you. Is here. Ooh, we That's got an ooh. ooh. Thank you very much. Yeah. We also have a few mosquitoes who have worked their way in here and one cricket that if we hear that motherfucker on this show tonight... I swear to God, we're going to try to find a microphone and get that cocksucker. Uh, um, hear what he's got to say. Yeah, hear what he's got to say because he's obviously uh, got something. He's got a strong opinions of uh, my jokes. Kind of like someone else. It's demoralizing as a stand-up comedian <laughs> to listen to that summer bitch try to express what he thinks of everything I try to do in here. And so if he opens his yap tonight, I tell you, it's going to be an issue. Yeah, that's a fake one. That's a, that's not the real one, right, Kev? Tell me, please, it's not him. I, I don't he know. He haunts where to my find dreams. On here. I don't know. He's a real guy. He lives under that fridge. I'm pretty sure. And uh, while we can't uh, get on, oh, I forgot. I'm on myself still. But anyways, I'm, I got to get on with. Uh, there he is. There's Kevin, and our uh, also my co-host mm-hmm. for season eight. He's here in all his glory. He's quite stiff and robotic, much like the real person he's fashioned off of. Ladies and gentlemen, Chartered Robot. Thanks a lot, Pete. Oh, Dave. If I don't hear another word out of you tonight, it will be just fine with me. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, it is. And I, who am I, you might ask? I am your host and two-time, two-time. President's Club Award winner, Pete Van Dyke. 
Yes. You know, for those of you who don't know what the President's Club it, Award is, it's uh, you know that's a shame because it's a real big deal. You should look into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at them right now. Yeah, they're glorious trophies. What more do you want? You know, I could I should show them always on the air. But uh, anyway, tonight's show is a great show. We have uh, the problem. The problem I have to solve. This is a date. This is not. I'm not joking around about any of this. This is real life stuff. Opening up my true life. Saying what really is going on, and it's horrifying. And you know what's going to happen when you ha- when you're a parent, and you kind of glorify it for part of the time. Yeah, you're looking. You think you're looking forward to it, maybe. Yeah, there's times definitely you think it would be a great thing. Yeah. Uh, but there's also times where um, when the reality starts to get closer, and it starts to become a real thing, it's like, oh my god, uh, I am grossly unprepared for this to happen. Right. And I'm gonna. What it is 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 that I have two children, and they are both going off to university at the same time. And we will go from having two kids to having zero kids all of a sudden. And my wife and I will be empty nesters. Yeah. And that is uh, that's what I'm. What the what the crisis that I'm faced with is that I will be a 47 year old empty nester, and I have. Uh, luckily, I'm. I I have. Like I'm in good shape, I should be able to enjoy a bit of life, yeah. you know, from this point on. And I'm not, I shouldn't have to uh, have as many obligations and responsibilities, <laughs> right? Right, I agree with you. In theory, right? In theory. Um, but what a change! Like but what a change! Yeah, you're getting like uh, you didn't even get like um, the opportunity to have one leave and still one at home. Like you're that band aid's getting ripped off. Yeah, it's all. It, luckily, like they're not going too far. Right. I'm probably still going to be needed all the time to drive them shit and to like <laughs> uh, bring them home for any whim or whatever. And I'll do it gladly. Yeah. I will drive seven hours to tell five minutes of dick jokes. I'll. Fucking for sure. <laughs> go do something for my kids, you know. Yeah. yeah. So like, um, uh, I I I'm not I'm not like going to be abandoned by them. They're not going to the other end of the world or anything like that. But it's like it still is a a, a thing where you're kind of done. Like as yeah. far as like um, the permanence of the things that you that you like spend so much of your life like kind of like planning for and working for, you know. Like you're trying, you try to save for their college. You know, yep. you try to uh, make sure they live. They have you have a house that's going to be suitable for for them, and you're going to want to make sure they have like the things they need to succeed. And then after you get to a certain point, and things they're off and it's they're doing their own thing, you're you're what you're not like working towards anything anymore. Yeah, you've you've succeeded. You're there. You're done. Yeah, like yeah. you're kind of like at the point where yeah, everything's in motion, and I have to. Sure, we still got to like help out paying for stuff yeah, and yeah. all that. You know, like there's going to be still responsibility, but as far as the day to day goes, coming home to an empty house, you know, like and and like just having like the that that less commotion. Like there's less of that. Well, there's two people that have been with you all their life. Yeah. Till now. <laughs> yeah. That's a. And then not. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and you, it's a success, though. I mean, if they're capable of going away to school and living without you, you, you did yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's still. You and to be honest, like, that's, that is what, that's what I hope for, you know? Like, um, it's nice now with, with FaceTime and stuff like that. You can, like, you can, like, wake them up in the morning. If they answer. Yeah. If they want, if they yeah. want you to. Yep. Which I knew that um, when my daughters had gone away in the past, you know, when they had tough times, they would ask you some, you know. Yeah. Especially when the, the last year in the pandemic, like, they didn't allow you to be, to interact with people. Right. Right? So there was no one to, like. That's all you know. Interact with in the morning. So if you didn't call someone, then you didn't have anyone, you right. know. Right. Yep. So my daughter did go away for a bit last year to to, to another university. And, uh she uh, was like, it's like, it's like solitary confinement Yeah, in prison, you know, like it's really is, it wasn't a way, to, it was nothing what everyone was, everyone was like boosting them up like, oh, you're going to go away to school and you're going to have life. the time of your life. And then they're like, no, if, if someone's in your room, they'd break it up. They'd be like, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, yeah. are you trying to kill each other? You know? 
Yep, and you couldn't you couldn't gather like like the parties that we were used to. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, that's not a thing. Yeah, if, if you were off campus, I think you could still get away with like yeah, you know, having having, having friends over or something like that, you know, in your backyard or something. But right, they wouldn't allow that anywhere else. But you're just a social pariah if you do it. Yeah, caught. yeah. Or if you get caught, yeah. And that's what was happening. Yeah, yeah. and then they would get ostracized. Yeah, it was it was brutal. So it wasn't great. So hopefully this year will be different for him. I don't know. I know we're getting into that shit again, like as far as case, uh, a fourth wave or something. But Yeah, I don't know. I'm I think they're point. just talking about it differently now. I, it seems like they're talking about the fourth wave coming and they're talking about it not, like I don't know, get, like they're still going to talk about going on with life. Yeah, I would assume if enough people are vaccinated, you can keep going. Yeah. I think that's, that's uh, hopefully that's the plan. Do what you got to do, but I'd rather just keep keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think at this point in time, you got to learn how to work within this thing. Like, otherwise, we're done. Yeah, like there's going to be revolt. Yeah. You know what I saw on the way back? We went up like I last week. We got um, super fucked over by the uh, by not doing a show on all of our charts. Oh no, we're climbing up all the charts all over the world. <laughs> And uh, turn on you quick, don't they? Yeah, and when I didn't do a a regular Thursday show last week, they a lot of countries said, "Get the fuck out of here, Dutch Holland. Oh, no. We don't want you." Did did Holland even turn on us? No, Holland is the only one that went up. <laughs> that's even. I don't know if that's better or yeah, worse. I slipped off before, and then all, someone else. I every once in a while, and also I've been going by these numbers on the Podbean because that's what where I get statistics from all the right. time. And then recently I went to this other thing who like talks with Podbean. Right. But they get their own statistics. And then uh, on that one, one day I got like a whole bunch of people downloaded. Mm -hmm. And then on the other one, I got no one. Like on Podbean, I got nobody. And then on the other one, I got like, a, you know, like a whole bunch. Right. So then I, uh, I realized that uh, there's a whole bunch of places that get where people can listen and then they don't all get the data from everyone. Wow. And then you, so like even cause we're out. So like, even though we're approaching like a, a, a download milestone with Podbean, right. That's doesn't, that doesn't include like a whole bunch of other ways people have listened to us. That's just scratching the surface. Yeah. You're a so, big deal. Well, it, it does make me f feel a little bit big, a just bit. Like oh this. yeah, just like my sign on my table. I should do. I should turn that around so I read it, eh? Yeah. Right. You know I'm a big deal, Kevin. I know. I it. need to know I'm a big deal, otherwise I have no confidence. You have to remind yourself once. Yeah, you have to remind myself you today. You know what? You beat yourself up more than anybody else. Yeah, it's true. Nobody else really cares. <laughs> they. I said that to a young comic, and uh, and I go. She was like, "How are you guys not um, more nervous before you go up?" Mm -hmm. Number one, it's a terrible show. The the, the t show that, we, that I was trying to do, literally, this is a this is it's awful. It was an open mic. Yeah. So you go. I'm going there just for the mic time. And I and uh, but you get there. There's a birthday party. There's an actual birthday party. Oh no. And uh, there's children at the birthday party. So it was a clean show, obviously. Or no, no. I did not sign up for a clean show. Oh good. And I was a third comic up, and those fucking kids are still sitting there. Waiting for, for and I've just heard horrible open micers who don't know how to tell a joke that isn't cock pussy fuck right. or whatever you know yeah. like, and they didn't care and the kids weren't really listening they were just coloring on the table or whatever. I don't even know if they could hear because the bar was so loud the street noise behind there because the windows are all open the street noise was uh, it's on Richmond in London and it's just That's like a busy road busy road it's loud I can't hear myself think basically and. Uh, it's like um, it's like a nightmare scenario, you know. Right. I tell all these kids at the beginning of my set, like children at the back, you know, I'm not your parents. They put you here. You're yeah. gonna learn some shit tonight. Yes, and then are. I told the dildo joke I wrote. I wrote a dildo joke, yeah. and I needed to tell it. I needed. I'm here as an open mic working night for me <laughs> to find out if this dildo joke is worth putting in my act. And. <laughs> I think it's a keeper. <laughs> the kids loved it? Oh, yeah. The, no, the kids actually they just kept coloring. They, they didn't seem to pay attention to any of it. 
<laughs> but uh, but it, the table that was paying attention seemed to. I got a reaction from him on that. Actually, nice. two of the girls had strong opinions on dildos. Oh yeah. Oh man, young drunk women at these comedy shows lately have been really. Oh, like if you mention something about sex, which I do quite often in my act, mm-hmm. uh, they have a strong opinion and it's always that it always, the ones with the strong opinion tend to be leaning towards uh, very overtly sexual. Okay. Like if you say like, uh, if you mention like being embarrassed by something like uh, if you were like saying like, uh, like how much does you know, does my wife have to shove, you know, shove this dildo in her vagina for, you know, like yeah. what, what does she all like about that? That wasn't the joke, by the way. This joke was totally different. I'm not telling it on the air because you fuckers, you got to come out and see it. me. Yeah. You don't see this man. <laughs> but anyways, uh, they, uh, but anyways, like if you were telling a dildo joke, where's it going at this point? How overtly, uh, how yeah, the overtly. girls were like, Hey, uh, I, there's no shame in, in masturbating. Like they're always saying like, I love to shove dildos in my pussy. They love it. You know, yeah. they, 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 they like to make sure that everyone at the show knows that they love such things. You know, <laughs> yeah. the one, the one show I told you in Kitchener where the two girls both had balls. When I s- suggested balls were unattractive, they, they, they were outraged. Huh. They had to say that they disagreed strongly with and that. They, you needed to know. I need to know. It had to stop my act for it. <laughs> I, I had both of them said it, and I did stop my act for it. And I acknowledged how weird this is that they both felt so strongly about balls, right. and I still feel that way. Yeah. How weird that is. And they say, and the one girl in the smoking area afterwards did say she liked the way it feels when when they slap against her when she's getting banged real hard. Okay, that's well, what she said. That's good to know, but not worth stopping an act over. No, she, she told me afterwards, and oh, the, which oh. was nice of her to tell me that. She didn't have to, t- like, if she would have told me that in the show, I think I still would have appreciated that information, to be honest. Yeah. It was good information, yeah. Because I really did picture her getting banged real hard and getting the, those balls slapped against her, Total which... Balls hitting her. Yeah, yeah, which is nice. It was a nice visual to put in my mind. I enjoyed it. As you were talking to her. Yeah. she's t- But that's what I'm talking about. They tell you dirty yeah. things like that. Hmm. And I don't know. I don't know, Kevin. I'm starting to think... I think the girls are the perverts now. Yeah, I think the girls have the have the have the power. Yeah, well, we're afraid to say, like most guys are afraid to say anything because you get in trouble. Yeah, you'll you'll be seen as somehow assaulting them or something, right? right? To to hit on them even. Yeah, I got to tell you, I had to do. I'm in a, in a short film. I'm acting in a short film. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this story. Uh, I hate, I'm embarrassed even to talk about it, to be honest with you, because I'm embarrassed that I that I'm act I'm I'm telling people I'm acting in a you're, film. You're a working actor now. Yeah, I am not. I'm not getting paid. Oh, but oh, sh- I shouldn't even say that. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I've done this for a friend. It's AJ Bates' uh, project, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm doing it. I did it because he asked me to, and um, I've never acted. No, in any way, shape, or form. That's not true, but. Well, uh, yes, Kevin. You know what? Let's tell the truth to the audience at home. These are our diamonds that are listening right now. These are not just any schlubs, you know, people checking out the show. The people that are listening are our diamonds. Yeah. And then you know the truth. I did act before. In fact, you and I, Kevin, were in a production together, uh, along with Dave Charters, yeah. uh, who's well known to the show, and who the robot was made in his epigy. Or what, is, that, is that the right word? Sounds good. Is that where you? That's where you take a, make a dummy of a guy and then you burn it in the town square. You burn it in effigy. That sounds right to me. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, that's what he is. The robot. We'll eventually burn him in our backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Content. Yeah. Oh yeah. We gotta make sure that one's on Patreon. Hey. Eh? Yeah. We'll burn the robot on Patreon. Charters can do it too if he ever comes back to the show and he says, "I don't uh, want. I don't want. Idea, we don't need actually. that anymore." Then we'll burn him up. We can burn the robot. It, maybe him. Maybe when when the real guy meets the robot, they'll get along great, and then they'll just want to do all their shows together. I just hope the real guy doesn't get burnt by the robot. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. This is a learning machine, right? Like, a yeah, he's machine. going. He'll eventually just uh, show no regard to human life at all, yeah. and take us over, just like corporate corporations. But that'll be a uh, that'll be good Patreon content for our queen. Yes, which I think the hot tub video that I sent her is is not worked yet for her. Uh-oh. And you know what I got to say is to our queen, 
Uh, it sounds like we're doing a segment called Feedback. We got feedback, eh? Yeah. As we're already. Oh, wait. I'll play the theme. We got feedback. Hey guys, if you want to see our hot tub video, which we did when we were having a mustache contest where we all got in a hot tub together and made kind of like homoerotic jokes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got to join our Patreon. Actually, the guy that's in the video who we all thought was the star of that video has begged us not to put that on there. Please don't do it. It's going to hurt my career. So we, as soon as we get so many Patreon subscribers at uh, patreon.com slash dutch hall we have to take that video down and then when that vi- and then we because he's he's going to be uh really mad at me and uh, and my cousin will be mad at me but wouldn't that be a great way to get adam to sign up for patreon and get that video right if charters he's like the he's like the trump card of this whole thing right so like if everybody else uh, goes to Patreon right now and buy for like five bucks a month or ten bucks a month, whatever. Anyway, even five bucks a month, you're gonna get the video, mm-hmm. so you get it. And then, uh, and then, uh, but and you keep getting it until he's to the point where he's like, uh, "I heard you have that Patreon thing up there." And I'll be like, "What? What are you talking about?" Yeah. And uh, then I'll be then he'll be like, "I know fucking well you do, Pete." I'm like, how you don't? I didn't see that you subscribed at all. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> Someone, yeah, because if you sign up, you can't be a rat. You just got to keep signing up. Yeah, but if he signs up the day I see Dave Charter uh, oh, yeah. subscribes to your Patreon, that video is coming down right away. So you want to get in ahead of him? Yeah, because that is then I. I lied to him. I told him I wouldn't put it up, and I did anyway. And I don't think he should be able to take it down. For actually, I don't know if I said I wouldn't put it up. This is how the text went. Should I read the text? But I, I, this is how I remember the text going. I said, I said, can I put it on Patreon? You know, I know you don't want it because you think you're going to get fired because you were funny one time. Right. For fuck. But, uh, <laughs> the, and then, uh, but if you want me to take it down, like I took it down, mm-hmm. right? Even though everybody liked it. And then the person who gave him the feedback <laughs> at his place of employment, that made them all scared. The feedback was... Oh, I missed that one. The f- it was... <laughs> I would have missed that one too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was uh, that, hey, you guys are uh, killing it. Like, you guys are super funny. That that hot, hot tub stuff was hilarious. Oh, and he got uncomfortable. Yeah, he just didn't like the fact that, he, that people knew about it huh. in his place of business. So he's like, take it down. I don't want it to get to the wrong people who are going to not like it or whatever. So I'm like, okay. I took it down because I don't want to do anything to hurt that guy's uh, career. Right. Uh, uh, but Patreon, like, I mean, eh, come on. What's the chances of somebody at your workplace paying me money on a monthly basis? You know, like, right. I, now you're talking about a, kind of a perfect storm that's going to be like, so the odds are real low. And the fact that I know our queen, our one and only Patreon supporter, mm-hmm. her, uh, who is the person that we hold in the highest regard, Jen Husko. Absolutely. Um I would give her whatever she asked for. And what she asked me for was the hot tub video. Yeah. And as far as I look at my lifelong friendship with Dave, and I look at a woman that's been paying me for five or six months, and I like the woman that's paying me for five oh, or six months better. better. Hey. And I feel that it's more important wow. to think about who's giving you money here. Absolutely. <laughs> versus who's been a lifelong friend. Well, if he's a lifelong friend, he'll get over it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He has to forgive she might me. stop paying. Yeah, if I do the wrong thing to her, that ten yeah. bucks has gone away. That's right. That's that's goddamn one hundred and twenty bucks a year, Charters. That's Vulcan logic right there that you just put out. Yeah, that's so, a lesson in finance right there for your for all your listeners. Anyways, I don't see how he can't forgive me for all that. Yes. And if you guys want to join this page, this wave of Patreon support, <laughs> I don't even really know what I'm doing. I'm really hoping that one day somebody, like some guardian angel, is just going to come down and say, "Hey, Pete." Your podcast is pretty good, and you've been doing it forever. I know you know how you, how to do it. Do you, do you have any fucking idea how many things you're doing wrong as far as 
not getting it out to the world. Hmm. Like as far as like uh, getting a proper website, getting a proper like uh, all those like, uh, you know, tags and shit that you got to put on them. Oh, okay. Like all the SEO optimization and such. And all all that stuff I have no idea about. All the ways you got to post regularly on this and that. And I told my daughter too, if I was like every morning I will like smoke a joint, right? Right. And then uh, because I'm nauseous, I feel like I'm going to puke, right? And I know that part of my routine is like to settle down myself down as I come out and I smoke a little joint, right? Yeah. I have a, co- a tea, I should say. I have a tea and I smoke a joint. And I say, if I was to film that every day on like Instagram Live, me just sm- having a tea mm-hmm. and drinking my – and smoking a joint, but I'm like talking to like whoever's chatting up or whatever, yeah. that would make me way more successful, than what <laughs> I'm doing now. Yeah. Oh, oh, this live stream or any video or even the the audio podcast for that matter. Yeah. I was saying, I said, this is another bet I made with my daughter. I said, I bet you if I just made an Apple bong right now on YouTube and put it up on YouTube, like filmed it, just made an Apple bong and put that video of this is how you make an Apple bong. Mm-hmm. I would get way more views than if I do my podcast like every week of if if anything like this. I know it's the connections not there. I know the 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 what you're actually getting with those views is just a yeah no no real like lasting thing that you're going to be able mm-hmm. to have. It's just this. It's just the the pleasure of the view. I could get way more views doing some bullshit like that. Or if I even branded this whole show that I am just like um we like weed smoke and peed. You know, like yeah. I just like smoke weed and I'm like baked all the time and. It's a weed show. I would get all those like hardcore weed guys who love stoner type humor or whatever. Right. Uh, and, but it's like, uh, I don't want to be that guy. Like, I don't want to be branded anything. And I also don't want the show to be about one thing. I don't think you you sell yourself like that. I just don't think you could do it. No, I, because that's not who I am. No. Like, you don't think of like uh, Norm MacDonald as being a stoner comic, do you? No. But I'm pretty sure he, he smokes a lot of what? weed. <laughs> what? By the, I would say there's enough hints that he smokes a lot of weed. Wow. <laughs> but I don't know. I, maybe I'm guessing on that one. That's total speculation. Next, you're going to tell me Rogan smokes weed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like even Rogan, like he doesn't really make it his identity. But no. as, as, there was a time though where it, yeah, because it was kind of new to see a guy smoking weed on a podcast. Yeah. I think that that what he did. He did attract the stoner crowd, and like Doug Benson made a career of it. And if that's your thing, that's your thing. But I don't want it to be my thing. I'd rather talk about, like, uh, I'd rather be able to look talk about everything. Yeah. Rather than just be pigeonholed to one thing. What's dinging all the time? I don't know. Is this this could be our special guest? We are um, pot- potentially having a special guest here. So just let me grab my phone. Yeah, quick. for sure. <laughs> That'd be amazing if it were true. Oh, let me just see here. Uh, Could it be? Oh, no, it is not. It is not our guest. I'm sorry. That was just dead air for no reason. But it was good. uh, Good drama. Because you never know. Yeah, and I also found out I'm going to be emceeing tomorrow at the amateur night, so that's good. (laughs) Nice. I get to do way more time and tell my uh, dirty jokes. Maybe I'm going to do my dildo joke. Maybe I'll do my dildo joke, but people won't hear the show until Thursday, so they won't be able to go see it. Well. Ah, it doesn't matter. At least stuff's coming up in the house. Yeah. So, acting. Oh, I want to go. We did Patreon, Dutch Hall dot com, or Patreon dot com slash Dutch Hall, and go to go to the Dutch Hall website if you want to do your Amazon shopping, and you can click on our Amazon banner and blah blah blah. And uh, yeah, better help, but I don't want to do the better help ad because it takes too long. Be- so sorry, better help. <laughs> That's better help. Better pay me. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, but I don't want to do the better help ad today. I just don't want to. Don't do it. I'm not going to. They don't sponsor this show. Actually, they. I got it written on the thing. Maybe I should do the better help ad. And no, I'm not doing it. That's what I decided. Not doing it. I don't know. Um, I I don't feel any of these goddamn ads anymore. I just like it feels like it's all fruitless to me. Yeah. That's a. 
That's my opinion of those things. I used to like the. Uh, this is my daughter. Eh? I moved her in today, and she's talking to me constantly on this on the phone. Yeah. And I love the fact she's doing it, but I love the fact she's doing it because I have a relationship like that with her, and it's great. You know. That's awesome. But it's like uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of a podcast. She knows that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I told her that when I dropped her off, I said, "I'll see you tomorrow. I have to do a podcast tonight." And she's like, I "It's don't still dinging." It. Oh, fuck. You should I saw it to ring her off. You should reply to her. Oh, uh, I'm going to tell her I'm doing a podcast so that she'll stop dinging me. I bet you she dings more. But who knows? But that's good. She's, uh, I think it's really good that she, you guys have that relationship and she does want to talk to you. Yeah. It's hard to, this is the thing, uh, you know, you think you're re- ready to for them to go, but like you kind of like want to be like want them in a way to need you because it's like uh it's just nice you know that they um think that much of you because it's not like we th- we got it figured out no and we're we're a bunch of idiots you know like a really like there's no parent out there that's like oh yeah i'm i, I got this I'm all doing. figured out yeah. you know if you if you think you're that parent you're a psychopath <laughs> you're a psychopath yeah, you're, yeah. you are over Doing it, I guarantee you. <laughs> Helicopter parent. Just oh man, got it all figured out. I think the one thing that's comforting about parenting is that one hundred percent of us get it wrong. You know, like there's there hasn't been anyone that's gotten it right, and then so like it's just the hardest thing in the world to do. I remember it used to being like when mine was really little, being annoyed hearing people say, "Oh yeah, ours slept right from the get go through the night." And, yeah. The first time he looked at the toilet, he peed on it. And I'm just like, what? Oh, yeah. He's going to end up being a serial killer. Yeah, mine's broken. You're paying for that at some other day. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it's better if your kid's like shitting in the sink or something because then they'll probably be less of a problem later. <laughs> Free spirit. Yeah. They want to. I don't know, man. I, everything kind of balances out, I always think. Eh? Like, there's always kind of like. You look at everybody, and I look at my friends and their kids and my family and their kids, and you look at what everyone's dealing with. And a lot of times, it's always it's kind of a reflection of of what you. A lot of times, it's a reflection of you. So it's like a like your kids are kind of a reflection of parts of you, and then so you, it's it's like you're kind of prepared to handle their troubles because they're you've had similar troubles or yeah. you you know like whereas other people might not be as prepared because it'd be foreign to them or something. I don't know, but they it it's it's a. Uh, it's just something that uh, it's so hard. There's no way to describe it other than it's so difficult to do. But like, it's like the best. Yeah, like I, 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 I couldn't. I, I loved every. I love it all, mm-hmm. being a parent. But um, it's like the hardest part is like you. It's not you anymore. Like it's nothing to do with you. Right. Their life is theirs, and they're off. And now, most of the time, when I'm telling them stuff, I'm telling them like. Like, uh, they're asking me if things are right or wrong or something. I'm like, I, don't ask me. Like, I, I I can't tell you what's right or wrong. You have to figure out what's right or wrong. I can just tell you what I know. Yeah. And you you decide if, if what's right or wrong. But I can't tell you. I can't tell you that. Like, that. if I tell you that, then you're going to blame me for your decisions in life, you know? And I don't want to be the cause of you not doing the things that you feel are right. Yeah. I'm that not- I might not get. Yeah, I'm happy to have ideas bounced off me, but that doesn't mean I know jack shit. Mm-mm. Especially you don't like you're not inside their head, and I don't know. I always thought like nothing could like a kid, your own kid. Nobody could make you so mad, but you love them so much all at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah. Like oh yeah, like do terrible things. Yep. That you're like oh my god, like like uh, I should never be treated <laughs> like the old human <laughs> being should be treated like you just treated your father. Yeah. Or whatever, and then. Uh, but you do anything for them, you yeah. know, like, and you forgive them immediately. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Unconditional love is a weird thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, you, it is completely unconditional. Like, mm-hmm. you can get totally fucked over. But you know that it's both ways, because they don't want to fuck you over. It's like, they're dumb. They're just kids, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, true. they just do stupid things. Like It's amazing. You know what? I had to, I, I, was, I, tell, I think of this story all the time. When I was my daughter's age, 19 years old. I had finished my first year of university and uh, my friend from university was going to come down to work on my tobacco farm and planting. Right. And uh, he lived in Huntsville. 
So we had to agree on a kind of central place to meet, and we decided on Hamilton. And I didn't know Hamilton at the time, Mm -hmm. and neither did he. But one thing we both knew about Hamilton is that when you drive through it, there's that big mountain (laughs) where there's like where the rocks kind of look like they're falling or whatever. Let's just go there because we both know that place. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So I went on the highway when you're (laughs) where where the 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 fucking mountain is, and I pull over on the side of the road away from my friend. Where the fuck is he? (laughs) He's trying to figure out a way to turn around to come that way on the highway to pull over (laughs) on the same side, which he did. Oh, yeah? It was the stupidest thing he could have ever done. Like, why wouldn't we say the McDonald's and the... But yeah. at that first exit or whatever, but no, we are nineteen. Yeah, we have no way of knowing anything. We are just like uh, figuring it out for the first time. Every stupid little thing we had to figure out. I remember sitting in the back uh, on the four o. Is it QEW? Uh, right by where like Tequila Willie's used to be. Yeah, in the back of a pickup truck, on like two pickup truck seats that were just sitting in the back of the pickup truck, yeah. facing backwards. On the on the QEW, and like I think about it now, and I'm like, what what would have happened if we got in any kind of an accident? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. just instant just pizza, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, the the we the stupid things you do, and then you think back and you're like, God damn, luck, I'm lucky, you know, like to get away with all that stuff. And then when they're your kids doing this stupid thing, you feel like helpless. Mm-hmm. And then, and then. Uh, they look. They eventually get to the point where they're telling the same stories yeah. you did. Where you're like, I can't believe I was that dumb. That's yeah. how you know that. I'm starting to hear my my oldest daughter start to say stuff like that. Like, oh man, you know, I can't believe I ever thought like that, or I, you know, I can't believe I was yeah. so young to that I thought that way. Because there is a phase where like they think we're complete complete idiots. Oh yeah, yeah. And, like how you ever even managed to. How you manage to get up in the morning and feed yourself? Yeah, that silly. Like yeah, that, yeah. Kind of dumb. I think what it is, like teenagers are the worst, and it's it's nature's way of telling you that, um, that like these guys got to go, right? Like it's nature's way because you love them so much when they're young, you got to keep them alive, right? Yep. You couldn't love them even more. They're cute. You can't know anything bad to happen to something cute. And they love you back. Right, and they love you back. They, they they run to the door to see you. It's like, oh, it's so nice when they're young, right? Mm-hmm. It's the best. And then you want you you want them to stay with you forever. You're never going to let those those ones leave. If they always ran to the door, if even if my 19-year-old <laughs> ran to the door yelling daddy and like, yeah. I would love that still to this day. I would yeah, think man. that's terrific. So anyways, uh, she could do it when she's 100, you know. I think that's awesome. But it, it it stopped happening a long time ago. Now it's like, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always aw- awkward affection. Um, but they, um, that's probably because more from me than than from her. I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. So the, um, what was I going to say? I forget what I was saying. Oh, more of that nature's way of saying. Oh, nature's way of it. When you're like, you don't want anything to happen to them when they're kid, when they're babies. But when they get to be teenagers and they start to become huge pains in your ass, then you're like, yeah, I want these guys to leave. Yeah. You know, and they just start to get their shit together and they actually do. You know, and then you then they, I think when kids get to be in their twenties and they get to be super fun, I think that's when it becomes super fun again. Because then you're just and I can already see that now because my. The kids are at the. I don't consider my kids really teenagers that much anymore because no. they're at the end of it. They're yeah. kind of in the young adult category, and young adults are already pretty cool because they they have a good sense of humor. You can talk to them about all everything. You don't have to like clean up your language or try to pretend yeah. you're not a human being yourself. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. And uh, it's just a way. Not it's, as much guidance either. You're more like just communicating at that point, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I actually get misunderstood sometimes. Like, are you telling me what to do? I'm like, no, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just like, be mo- like, think about it. Like, just make sure you don't forget to be. It's like people say, don't forget to be safe or something like that. I would right. be like, don't forget to, you know, not to spend all your money on bullshit. You know, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you're, you tell me what to do, that I did something stupid. I'm like, no, I'm just saying make sure you have enough money to yeah. buy garbage or you have to yes. – y- you're not going to ha- be able to eat a 
poster or, yeah. you know, like you have to eat to. You can't drink five Starbucks a day. Yeah, yeah. Or you'll be broke. Yeah. In a, in a week. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, then they kind of, th- and don't think that the fact that you got this mo- like money saved for school through RSPs or, so- or whatever, or ESPs, we did that because the government was giving away money. You got to get that. Yeah. That's the way we did it. And then you think you got like enough that's going to be, oh, we got this, we did something good to put away for our kid's school. And then you get the fucking bills and you're like, oh my God, we don't have enough. Yeah. We still don't have enough. So even though there's a big number that we saved, we still don't have enough. You yeah. know, like, so you, you have to realize it's got to last you and you're smart. And when you finish getting a university degree, you still can't get a fucking job. Mm-hmm. So you still, you got to go to grad school after that or something to get a job or go to back, go to college or something so then that's more money so think you know live like you're broke yeah. no matter how what what your accounts as i tell them because you are broke because any money you have saved has to be go to pay them in the future and it, you don't have it now yeah if you don't spend it you'll have it later yeah just be cheap man i i don't know how i can stress that enough to kids but they ha- always do i love it the one that, like my my niece was i was up at the cottage with her and uh she was all ears for any cheap tips on how you could be oh, cheap yeah. at school. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, yeah. That's, it, it was my most fun part about university, to be honest with you, seeing how little money I could spend. Right. And I had a huge OSAP check. Like, I had money in my bank account, but I'm like, I don't want to spend this because then I have to, I, like, I wanted to use it for something better in school. Yeah. Travel. Stereos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever it's for. <laughs> yeah. Bare minimum but, on school. Yeah. So I lived off of, uh, pasta a jar of mayonnaise and like like a like a small like a, a, a case of tuna yep like what comes in a pa- like a bunch of packs of cans like cat food yep and then you would um i loved off of that I made just tuna big t- pasta tuna salad i loved that for probably a month yeah and then you can maybe get some pasta and hamburger and a bit of tomato sauce and you got poor man's lasagna or whatever oh, but, but my my one roommate just ate wieners yeah. And uh, I remember one time that McDonald's had a one dollar Big Mac deal. Oh, yeah. I had uh, I would eat like um, three Big Macs a day, like uh, maybe even four. I think I would have, but I would have like yeah, I would have like three or four Big Macs a day. That's all right when the metabolism is good. Just yeah. put it in you. I read I heard today on the radio that every wiener, every hot dog you eat takes thirty minutes off your life. Really? That's what I heard on the radio, and it's got to be true. Wow, you should smoke it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, no, a hot dog, yeah. Those are, I don't have hot dogs very often. Um, no tube steaks? No, I don't have. That's one thing that I don't have very often. Even pizza, I don't have that any, very often anymore. I had it at that, again, that movie set. I was going to tell the movie, the acting story. Mm-hmm. I'm acting, and my job in the acting thing is to... Um, hit on a on a girl i gotta hit on this like principal i gotta like uh th- i'm supposed to be there for a meeting about our daughter with me my ex-wife uh-huh. that's the scene so it's me and my ex-wife meeting uh the principal and my ex-wife is late because she's like f- uh, uh, forgets about her family obligations all the time and i gotta constantly pick up the slack no. you know what it is kev what's that to be this kind of like uh uh, and anyways, this guy's a fucking douche. Anyways, the guy I'm the guy I'm playing Your character. Yeah, he's a, he, I don't like him. And neither does, and I'm supposed to be hateable and in the movie and everything like that. Anyways, I'm hitting on the principal. Yeah, and I, I've never hit on a girl my whole life. I, 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 I Jane picked me up. Like I, I don't have any skills. Okay. Right. I've watched my cousins who are silver tongued foxes. Ah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I and they were their magic, but I, I have uh, never uh, uh, done it myself. I'm not I'm not very um, skilled in that regard. So I had to make up lines the whole time. So this was really acting. Yeah, and I wasn't supposed to be like on mic. I'm supposed to be like it's mumbling in the background, and we're we're kind of seem like we're flirty. I'm sitting on the desk, and she's behind the principal's behind the desk, and I'm just kind of like. Being flirty with her. Oh, so you'd have to hook come up with like lines. <clears throat> I didn't have to, but I did. All right, what'd you come up with? I just had different lines, and I made sure I come up with a different line every time. Yeah. They told me you can use the, you can use the same lines. You don't have to like make up different ones. Yeah. But I thought it was more fun to make up different ones because I could see if I could get Joe to break in the back. Yeah. Like because he was running the 
sound. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I was, uh, I kept saying different lines, and I, there was like, uh, I think I said, uh, like, um, if you were my, if you were my teacher, I'd give you a lot more than an apple. Nice. I think that was one, and I was like, uh, I think I said one time, uh, um, something about like, do you remember at the Christmas concert where you were in that little black dress, and then. Uh, I picture bending that over, and then, I did. <laughs> and then Joe's feeding me ones on, on breaks. Like for the next one, try this thing about the swings. So you saw a swing set, and yeah. then you know they have adult swings too. And then you talk to her about the adult swings. Yeah, I was, and then uh, I tried that one, bombed it, bombed. But oh, I no. did, bo- I did botch it. I didn't, I did botch what he told me to say, but it bombed. It didn't get the reaction because you know I could tell when it was a fake thing or when I was really kind of getting to her, right? Because I don't know if she's ever going to listen to this, but uh, there was times where I thought that uh, I don't know if she's a good actress or if I was a good actor, but I think she was into it. You're winning her heart. Like I think she actually kind of thought that my, some of my dirty talk is yeah. my only thing I knew to do for being trying to be. They said you're supposed to be flirty and yeah. charming, oh. and I went with like filthy dirty. Nice. Like I'm going to bend you over and. Yeah. I didn't know that was <laughs> that wasn't. A, I, I, I sometimes I dial it back. You know. You weren't like, hey, what fucks like a bear and winks. <laughs> None of those. No, it was mostly like um, what really goes on in the staff room. You know. Uh huh. Like uh, and then uh, like that would be like, uh, you ever have a parent in there? You ever like uh. Have a uh, you ever have a parent over for some one on one time? <laughs> you know, yeah, stuff like that. It's you, working on me right now, right? Right. Yeah, that's what I do. And then she would say stuff like, "I'm enjoying this." Like I'm a, like, a, but then even at the set, we had to be just like flirty with her eyes. They're like, "Don't say, don't say anything. Just be flirty." Like looks at each other, like mm-hmm. flirty looks and smiles, and look away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was like after a while, I'm like. Is she like, is this like, is it, you know, like, I don't know. I'm getting confused. Yeah. Because I'm not an actor, eh? I'm just a, uh, but AJ says, come and look at the thing. Yeah. And I, I looked at it and I could tell you, I didn't think it looked that bad. I think like, they call that the dailies in the biz. Oh, really? Is that what it's called? I don't know. I hear it. You watch it right after the scene. You can watch it in the monitor. Oh. So I look at it and uh, I, I don't like watching myself, but like the, some of the faces and uh, Joe said it too. He goes, I don't know how you pulled off divorce looking so well. <laughs> you looked like the most divorced guy I've ever seen. <laughs> and I was like, I was watching. I was like, I do really look divorced. Because you're a goddamn good actor. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Well, you know what I did? Because I'm so self-conscious about not being a good actor that I really like, like wanted to know about this character. So I like... Uh, I made up a backstory for him. Mm-hmm. I figured out his justifications for why he would feel like this behavior is is like noble and just, you right. know. Yeah. Even though it's kind of bullshit, kind of he's he's like talking for his ex wife and he's being overbearing and he's he's uh, insensitive to her and stuff. Did you have like um, somebody in mind, like without saying who it was? Like, did you have somebody pictured in your head? Well, it's funny that you say that because the character resembles the old me. Oh, really? Yes, which is like I had to put on a suit and oh, okay. I had to look like a, oh, a douche. And uh, it kind of reminded me of my old my old self, mm-hmm. like when I was when I was not very fond of any of the choices I made. Okay. And uh, so, like, I did not like it. In that at first, and then I realized the character's not really like me. Just kind of like his, his like day to day is kind of like mine. But like the guy was like, uh, he he actually had because the girl, the girl character that plays my ex wife, I actually relate more to that character than I do to to mine. Right. Um, so I actually think my wife would relate to to my character more. Okay. So I used my wife as part of my model. All to right. be honest, as to be honest, because I thought like those qualities of that wife would be something of the, my, of my, my, uh, movie wife. Yeah. Um, would resemble some of the things I would do. Okay. And I would be like, uh, she'd have to put up with that. Oh. And I would know that, that like, I've seen her put up with stuff like that. And I do feel like, yeah, like, uh, that no one should have to put up with that. So she should feel like justified in saying that, like, 
you didn't do your job or whatever. Right, you know? right, right. Uh, so like, uh, so like, I I kind of use her, and I also you, but I I also kind of used um, um, I just kind of created a different character. No, I don't think it was a real person. It was just like I knew what he did for a living. Mm-hmm. I know kind of like uh, why he doesn't. Um, why he couldn't stay married to his wife when she had problems. And I do think he's kind of like, and he's just like motivated so differently. It's a little bit like, he's just like, uh, he reminds me of like the guy, last guy I worked for, I the last guy I worked for actually, the one I quit for at the bank, that's probably the closest to who I was modeled from. Yeah. Like I wondered if it was like some, a hundred people you met at those conferences and stuff you had to go It to. is kind of a combination. <clears throat> exactly. That's why I was having a hard time placing exactly who it came from. But I was like, the closest one was that one, was the last guy I worked for. But he, and he was himself a, a kind of like a caricature of all the other fuckheads, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but like she, the, the principal, like I really thought she might be, legit hot for me right and then the, the my my ex-wife yeah. who's my friend val who yeah. was on this show um she passed her audition right she, she i thought she was gonna fucking fly sideways at me she looked like she was gonna kill me at she, the, a oh. bunch of times through the like at the end of the scene she looks at me and i'm like oh my god like You're acting <laughs> am i gonna like are you really mad at me or like do you think less of me and i don't even know she might not she, like, I mean, I, it'd be hard, like, right? You spend a whole day hating a guy. Yeah. I wonder if that affects our friendship somehow, like, uh, subconsciously, you know? I know, um, I heard <clears throat> Edie Falco interviewed about when she did Sopranos, mm-hmm. that she, uh, was actually a little bit jealous of Gandolfini's real wife at some points. Oh, yeah, yeah? Yeah, like, she just, like, for what, she liked the guy a lot, I guess, or whatever, but also her character on that show, you know, she was a jealous woman. Yeah, yeah, like she was getting fucked around on a lot and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, she was said in an interview one time, she's like, sometimes I'm jealous <laughs> of his real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would be hard to because you're kind of trying to, as much as you can, put yourself in the mindset of this character. Mm-hmm. And then if you do it, if you had to do it like on a regular series, like I'm just doing it in a short film. Yeah. Imagine in a regular series where you're like spending years, you know, w- playing this role. You would be like, yeah, it would be, it would be kind of a mind fuck after a while, eh? Yeah. Anyways, I, I, I don't, I did never think I was that guy. Between scenes, I would, I wasn't like a method actor or nothing. Like I would, between scenes, I would break character immediately. Like as soon as they let me, I would break character because I thought the character was fucking terrible. Like I hated that guy. Like I didn't want to be him any longer than I had to be. So what I'm, I'm learning tonight is you're a goddamn good actor. Well, I'll tell you, Kev, I. Don't enjoy it. No, and I'm. I don't feel I'm going to go out of my way to seek out acting, um, but I will do it if I'm asked, mm-hmm. or if something good enough comes up again. So, do you feel like you've mastered it and you need to move on from it? <laughs> Is that what's going on? Here? Well, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Uh, that and the fact that it's so fo- fake and. And the only reason I like stand up so much is because it's so real, right? And, and if and if you go to, um, so if I go when I go to fake, but I and also this particular project I'm doing uh, is not a comedy, oh. and because it's not a comedy, I wouldn't probably watch it. And so then I'm making something I wouldn't watch, and then and then I don't really want to do that anymore yeah. you know like I, I would rather say hey i'm in this project it's really good you should watch it you know and it, maybe this is really good it's just not my cup of tea like it's not something that i consume what range though what what range what range yeah i'm uh, assuming it's like drama it is i have uh i have i, was, I have three scenes in uh-huh. it um in the one scene that we filmed the last day i had uh basically um, two lines, right? Like, uh, they're not really lines, but like two, like, uh, paragraphs or whatever. Oh, like a monologue. Not a monologue. Like I had to do one time I had to say like, um, um, always every day on the way home from school. Like I just feel it's very important to give her every opportunity to fully express the way she feels. 
Oh. And then that's the one. And then the other one where I had to go like, uh, um, uh, oh, Claire isn't quite available, right? Oh, Claire isn't always available to be there for her daughter. I mean, she tries, but it just never seems to be enough, you know, which is really hard on me. You know, being the parent that has to pick up the slack constantly. Wow. You know, that sort of thing. It's like inside the actor's studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're seeing it all happen. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm, AG's probably going to be so pissed off because the Dutch Hall listeners are going to have the inside scoop on this. They're going to know too long. Too, mu- too much of this movie. The plot's getting out. Well, Spoiler alert. But they're going to want to watch it now. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. And then uh, the other time I just had to drop off my kid and said, remember, you got a rash. And <laughs> then... Uh, <laughs> And then uh, this one. Wow, you went all like uh, oldie timey actor there. Yeah, tell your mama your bum's got a rash. <laughs> you got a rash, see? Yeah. The hardest part is like the one time they said, "Okay, we're gonna shoot close ups of Pete this time," but Pete, don't say any of your lines. Just do facial expressions. <laughs> and, cool. Yeah, that's what they told me to do. That's the main thing I learned. One, acting is really hard. Mm-hmm. It's not easy, like they say. Two, uh, they make you do like a lot of shit with the, when you're not saying those lines. The lines are like, it's kind of like your jokes. Like when you're telling jokes enough, who gives a fuck about the jokes? The jokes you're going to say a hundred times until you don't think about them. The, it's the rest of the stuff, the how do you react? How, do you, how, how would you be acting if you were hearing this for the first time and how do you convey that when you're not speaking you know? and they have to get like both sides of the conversation both like yeah, yeah. from one side then the other and yeah yeah we'll do yeah. You and the close and far and this perspective and that one same lines again okay this time you're gonna be off camera but still read your lines so you can feed them to there mm-hmm. the one time i had to read lines to a bone that was on the camera that and i just kept looking at the girl reading the lines <laughs> so i fucked it all up yeah because they're like, no, no, your eyesight's got to be at where she would be. So you got to look here, not there, where she's talking. I should have had her stand behind the camera. And it's, it was a really small room, and it was balls hot, dude. It was so hot. I thought we were going to die. No air conditioning, nothing. They kept mopping my face up with like what looked like um, it looked like uh, carbon paper. Mm-hmm. You know, like carbon paper, like yeah. when you have like a like a what is that called a when a ditto ditto machine. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It was something like that, and then uh, they would just mop my face up with it to ca- take the shine off, ah. and then because uh, it was hot as fuck, and then I had to put ice packs down my pants. Yeah, yeah, cause it did help. It did help a lot in the shoot to have ice because I'm wearing a fucking full suit, and I'm trying, oh, yeah. and I'm in a room that's a zillion degrees, hmm. and then uh, yeah, so I was. It was kind of. It was it wasn't the best of conditions, but it was it was it was a good experience. I really did enjoy it, and actually, I had two people that told me that I should really consider doing more of it. I just think so, it's great you mastered it already. Yeah, well, uh, I I don't think I'm as bad as I thought I was. I thought I was way worse than 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 I when I saw it. I, it wasn't as bad. I thought I was way worse. Hmm. It, it's like sometimes. Yeah, but I think it's because I I was so worried I would suck. That, you want to do a good job. You care about what you're doing. Yeah, and that helped me out. I think on this on this project, I think it helped, it might have helped me out. I don't think I'm a talent by any stretch of the imagination, and I do not feel comfortable doing it. But I would much rather do a comedy. So I think I have to write one if I'm going to do one. Maybe your next scene should be a love scene or a nude scene or something. I thought about that because I didn't have to have a a kiss or something in this one, mm-hmm. but. I'm I'm saying like hey like Jane like if 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 uh, this is the, like if I get tight cast in these kind of roles yeah I'm gonna be like the older handsome guy in these move in these Hallmark movies or something and right. I'm gonna have to be the one that's like coming out of the stable and then being changed by this girl who likes shopping or some fucking thing <laughs> all yeah. the movies that my wife watches yeah I said but then I'm gonna have to definitely make out with girls at the end of the movie right right. And then I started thinking, because there was two women there who I was in a scene with, one I'm flirting with, one I was married to and had a child with. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, it's not a stretch to think that, you know, if this was written just a little bit differently, I'd have to actually kiss one of these girls. Or both. Or both of them, maybe at the same time. And I have to say, is Jane going to be cool with that? Well, Can I double French kiss a couple of actress ladies in the in the spirit of the film? I think you lost <laughs> just acting. Yeah, I don't know. 
I think it's not as sexy as it looks. No. To do. Um, but I got to tell you, as a guy that's comfortable with kissing on the lips, mm-hmm. which I am, I would, uh, like, we grew up where you kiss your family on the lips. Like, you'd, it would, you see your aunt, you kiss your hand on the lips. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But some people have a problem with that. But we were raised as a kissy family, so I don't have a problem with kissing on the lips. And I said that one time in university to my friend. And he goes, you don't have a problem. You don't think that's personal? And I'm like, no, I just don't care. It's a kiss on the lips. is just an embrace. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And then uh, I was like, look, I kissed his girlfriend on her lips. <laughs> and then... Uh, Lead balloon? Huh? How'd that go over? No, no. She liked it. Oh. And then uh, the... then, uh, uh, she, But she did it too often. We did it too often. Okay. To prove that it didn't mean anything. Right. Until... He started saying, this is a little fishy. You guys are doing it too often, right? I mean, we were doing it right in front of him, too. Yeah. Like, we're just saying, like, look, this means nothing. We will kiss on lips. Because <laughs> she was on my side of the argument, uh, right? Yeah. But we did kiss on lips a bit too much. I got a little fooled by the end of that one. And uh, it's happened to me a couple times in my life <laughs> where I have, like, me uh, like kisses. That, that James one friend kisses so sexily mm-hmm. that sometimes you, you literally forget who you are and where you are. Okay. And that's just her saying hello to anybody. She has pillow-like lips. And you get lost in them. At my wedding party, she was in her wedding party, and the groomsmen are lined up in the coat room to congratulate Pete and Jane on their wedding. Just by, they're like, go, they're lining up to say to her, "Hey, ah, how did here's the Pete and Jane just taking like, another kiss from her, right?" Because they all, and even the bridesmaids were like, "I think I just made out with her," you know. Like, uh, <laughs> did anyone realize how awesome that kiss was? And she's a very good kisser. That's a good reputation to have. Huh? Yes, yeah, my wife's best friend. But there's a there was one New Year's party where it fooled me a little bit. Uh oh. Yeah, and that's the thing. And then where it was like my wife and her husband are like, "Hey, easy used to." There's a then, lot. Of- <laughs> <laughs> then you're like, "Oh, you way it wise up." You, but because it because her lips are so pillow like, and she understands. My wife Jane understands when I tell her this because everybody expresses this problem. Yeah. It's just too. She's too good of a kisser. It's like her her curse. It's her blessing and her curse at yeah. the same time. It's something that she has to live with. Anyways, I forgot what I was going with that. I think I could kiss girls on film is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. I think it could be professional, and I think it could do without getting a boner. I was going to ask. Yeah. Well, I think I could do it without getting a boner. If it's supposed to be French kissing on a set, mm-hmm. tongue. So they want to see the tongue for some reason. They want to at least see the tongue go in and the silhouette on the side. I want to see a little bit of the tongue yeah, or whatever. So I'm gonna, we're going to have to actually tongue kiss. I can do it professionally, mm-hmm. not become emotionally attached, but I have no promises for the boner. It maybe, may happen. Maybe you need a stunt double for that. Why? Do you think the boner is going to hurt the scene? No, not at all. I just mean if, if, if the boner is a concern, then no. you might have to get a it's kiss, no kiss to double me. to come in. It's of no concern to me. Oh. It's of no concern to me if it's not to the actress. The boner might help the scene, might make it look more it's more realistic. authentic. Yeah. Am I not supposed to be a man? But um, a, a closed mouth kiss, like a, just a a kiss on the lips, like hold it a long time, like a gone with the wind kind of kiss. Mm-hmm. No boner there. There's no boner there. No. All day, every day. No problem. No, all day, every day. I think I could do a full on nude, soft core porn, fake fuck scene. Yeah. Where you just bang. The back of them. Like you bump uglies, but not Yeah, ugly. but you're, nothing's really going in. Yeah. But you're like, Ugh. It always looks like they're kind of like banging the, their like um, <laughs> upper thighs or something. Like they're yeah, not even yeah. close to the, where it would be. Right. But That's where you thought it was when you were a kid. Yeah. But I could do one of those scenes. Full on doggy style, slamming into the girl's butt, mm-hmm. but not going in. Yeah. But like fake fucking her, slamming my pelvic bone <laughs> into her butt. Mm-hmm. Um. I could do that without getting a boner too. Yeah. If there's a full movie crew around. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because if there's a full crew, Just stage fright. Yes, yeah, sound and everything. Plus, I think I'm going to be hitting those bones hard, just to make sure it's uncomfortable for me. Mm-hmm. Keep the boner down that way too. Mm-hmm. And I would assume the girl wouldn't be completely naked, but she probably maybe she is. Maybe she's got one of those uh, fleshy thongs. Yeah, but either way. Um, I think I could do that professionally. Yeah. In the spirit of the of of the film. Wow. <laughs> and I think uh if my wife has a problem with that, 
then maybe she doesn't like the arts. I don't think she's if she <laughs> if she has a problem with that, she's definitely not supporting your acting career. No. No. All I want to do is so, a little soft core <laughs> porn, <laughs> a little performance art where I fake fuck deal. girls yeah. and try to make uh, try to hold my boner down so the boys don't see it in the crew. Yeah. You know? That's not not cheating. No. Jesus, no. What are you jealous cheating. about? More work than more no. work than cheating. No. But I did feel a little more handsome at the end of that shoot, though. Having a day to hit on a girl. Yeah. Even though my lines were shitty and I'm not um, particularly charming, I did get the feeling that I could um, still charm the pants off a girl in her did early have, 50s. Like swagger? I was supposed to. Did you Did you feel like you had more swagger when you left, though? Oh, when I left? Yeah, yeah. I did. I felt attractive. Not just handsome, but just like... Yeah, I felt like, uh, I, felt like I had a power... A, the power to to uh, get women. Nice. Yeah. I did feel like I had that power. And uh but it's like uh I, I don't want to use my power. I just want to know I have it. You yeah. know, it's like the Patrice O'Neill thing where he says, you know, I I just I want to still know I can catch fish. That's why I kept the boat. You yeah. Know? Like I that's the same thing. Like I yeah. I know I have a fish, but I like to know I can catch other fish if this fish fucks up or whatever you uh, said. Yeah. And the other f- the fish you have needs to know you can catch other fish. Mm. That's what the joke was, so that she doesn't, so she wouldn't, uh, so she would uh, stay straight or whatever, like yeah. keep her straight. Why do you keep coming back in my boat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of my favorite stand specials ever. Yeah. Um, I would have to put if that one's definitely in my my Rushmore of stand up specials, and I go. I go skanks for the memories. I listened to that with my kid in the car the other day. You did? Oh, we left our balls off. Right? Yeah. That thing holds up. It holds up, man. That's 25 plus years old and it still holds up. Like that's evergreen jokes. No, like, and sure, some of them are probably not uh, correct anymore. Like I think he's got maybe the midget jokes. Yeah. But like uh, most everything else is pretty... I still, some people I still send happy harassment day texts to, like the, what is it, the last Thursday before Oh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving or something like that, yeah. yeah. I, when I see it come up, I'm like, I'm sending somebody a happy harassment day text. <laughs> yeah. That's the Patrice one, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then uh, I don't know who I'd fill out the Rushmore specials with. I probably have to go, that's a tough one, man. But yeah, that whole fucking uh, skanks for the memories still holds up. Like it's still still funny shit. I remember as a kid watching a Howie Mandel special at your house. Oh really? Where he puts the, the but, what's the, your name? What's your name? I asked it three fucking times or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that at your place. Yeah, my parents were big stand. They watched a lot of stand up. My dad, when he was young, when I was really young, he watched a, he taped stand up specials and watched them. And I remember watching Richard Pryor. And Robin Williams and uh, George Carlin and uh, Red Fox. <laughs> Red Fox, I, I I really liked Red Fox when I was a kid. That push joke? I, all his dirty jokes. Like, he did all the stag jokes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just filthy stuff, eh? And I just remember just thinking that was hilarious, you know, like, just so dirty. I liked it because you couldn't say any of that shit, right? I liked the roasts when Greg Giraldo was on them. Yeah, yeah. I don't care much for his special. It was okay, but the roasts were good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some of Jesenic's specials are pretty damn good, too. Like, they're yeah. so well-written, and they're so funny. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Hedberg's one special where the crowd didn't like him. Did you ever see that, the raw footage? I've listened to it. I haven't seen it. I watched the entire uncut version of the sa- of the sh- of the show. Like, I, I watched the special a long time ago, not knowing the backstory of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I watched the raw footage on YouTube. I just came across it. And man, oh man, he really didn't like the way things worked. Like when he <laughs> saw the way that they wanted to make a special, like and it, they filled it with people that weren't your fans. And Yeah, yeah. And uh, Eye candy. Yeah, and he yeah. knew this is just not going to work. And he just uh, was real honest about it. And I think he still did well, but he felt like he was bombing the whole time. And that, they ended up sweetening it up and making it a special. And such a shame because the guy's like, if they would put it in front of his people, it would have been f- fucking electric, you know. Such a joke writer. Yeah. Like just one joke after another. And different, too. Like, you can say some of his jokes, and they're not jokes, but if he says it, they're jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, uh, that's it's just his either inflection or timing or whatever he does. Like, yep. 
Um, Broken. Someone asked me if I wanted a frozen banana, and I said no, but I want a regular banana later, so yes. Yeah. That's not really that funny. Rice is good if you want to eat a million or something. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, there's a little bit of a joke structure to that one, but, you know, the other one, like, he, he does it with all <laughs> style to make it funny, you know? There's one I do like when he's like, uh, I walk past the laundromat at 2.30 in the morning and the sign said, sorry, we're closed. He's like, you do not owe me an apology. <laughs> 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 yeah. I like some of those things like that. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, yeah. There's a zillion of them, eh? Like those guys. Like you have to if you have like short jokes like that. I always think like you gotta you gotta know a zillion jokes in order just to fill up your twenty minutes, let alone an hour yeah. of it or whatever. And Jesus. if you're tanking, it's got to be tough. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the thing about those guys, eh? Is like if they only have the one gear and you don't like the gear, then you're <laughs> fucked. Yeah, but they just gotta keep t- keep telling them. Keep telling them. Yeah, Hope one hits. Those guys bomb harder than other people, but they also um, um, hit harder than most people too. Yeah, a guy like Stephen Wright or something like that. Like, and he mixes it up too. He does have different gears, Stephen Wright, to give him credit. But he's most known for the one-liners and yeah. stuff like that. And and uh, like that guy can must have to write it, write and write and write. But he's learned how to do it in such a peculiar way that even for one-liners. You could say that's a Stephen Wright one liner because of it's so peculiar. And yeah. if anyone did one like it, it would be stolen. Versus like a Hedberg joke or a Stephen Wright joke, they're both one liners, but they're so different. Right. No one really confuses them. You know, like anyways, I, 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 I like those guys for pure writing. Jason Allen was started out that way. I watched him with Tom open for Tom Segura when I first met him, and uh, he was all one liners. And I was really impressed because I'm like, man, you must really write a lot of jokes. And he did it. He did. And he does. And then um, but now he doesn't do any of that stuff. He's really strayed from it because he realizes how much more time you can get by fleshing out an idea and work it into a story yeah. and stuff like that. Take that one thought of a joke and just turn it into something. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I, I, I like the storytelling aspect of it. And if I always think that I like the way British people do comedy where – they kind of insist you have a beginning and an end and a theme and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like, I don't like being restricted by structure, but I kind of like having a story arc. I like follow. the fact that when you guys do your, uh, when you do comedy in that way where you're telling stories, that whether the story is true or not, you guys do it in such a way that you believe that that shit actually happened. Yeah. And, a, and a, maybe a, a nugget of the story is true. Yeah, yeah. But the whole rest of it that's making it really funny, like... When you watch great comedians, you think, you yeah. know, all that shit happened to them. Yeah, I, I, like, I know comedians who just full out lie about shit, and I don't. I don't. I always say it's a real. It is every bit of that story is true, and most of the time it is. And then, and then the sometimes you flavor it up with, with uh, jokes, you know, mm-hmm. to, to embe- uh, embellish certain parts to exaggerate something yeah. or whatever but the the mean potatoes of the story is dead facts true that i believe that's the only way i can tell it but other guys are like don't let the truth get in the way of a good story like just tell the tell a better story and i'm like nah the story is good like the real life things that happen are crazy there's too many of them that are too good to make shit up in my opinion yeah Take the real shit that happens and make it fucking funny. Punch it up a bit, yeah. Make it funny. Like, it is funny. You know it was funny. You were there. There's something funny about that. Mm-hmm. Mine it till you find it and make it funny. The story's funny. Charters was said this one time when we went to Vegas, and uh, I and I took it as a great compliment, and I think about it from time to time. We're, we're having a great night. We're walking. The girls are going to stay back at the hotel, and the guys just want to go rock the strip. Mm-hmm. And so we're just walking the strip, and we run into all these guys trying to like uh, get us to come in their limo to a strip club, right? And we're not interested in going to a strip club, but we want to talk to the limo drivers. So we're just asking them questions and shooting the shit with the limo drivers, and they're hilarious. They've seen so many oh, things, yeah. and they've, they've got so many stories. And we're just sitting out there and like, shooting the shit with these guys and like uh, hearing some wild stories and it's just a bunch of craziness, a bunch of fun stuff happening. And Charters at one point turns to me and says, 
I can't wait till we go home and we can hear you tell the story about this. Oh, awesome. About what, about what we're going through now. Hmm. Like at the moment we're going through it, you know, yeah. he's waiting. To, he's looking forward to the future when we're going to look back at the moment that we're living. Wow. Which is completely wrong. By every stretch of the imagination. You're supposed to be in the moment. Yeah. That's the wrong time to be thinking about how this is going to be retold in the future. You're enjoying it now, you know, like uh, he's got to work on that. But I did appreciate the compliment that he said, like, I'm going to be interested to see how it goes through your filter and comes out as a story is what he was more getting at. Yeah. He was still enjoying himself at the moment, but he wanted to see like how I was going to take this and retell it because like. He says it's almost as much fun to hear the recounting of it as it is to be it, be, live it, hmm. and the recounting of it lives a lot longer than the moment too. <laughs> it does, yeah. So and then it does better. tend to morph because yeah. uh, over time, especially because you remember details. Like the, a lot of times, the comics that that uh, just change little bits of the story to make it a little bit better, they end up just uh, re-remembering it, like as that as how it happened. That's that. Yeah. Because you tell it so many times, and then you don't remember the real story anymore. You remember the retelling, and then that's how that's how memories work. Yeah, uh, I, I, I uh, that's why there's no. I, I've seen it with my own two it. eyes. This one, this one dude, man, he tells the same story about me all the time, and it's not true. <laughs> and he tells it in front of me, and and I know it's not true. I was there. It's not true. It was a quite boring, uneventful evening, and he tells it like we're wild party animals, you know, and we got chicks all over us and stuff. Like, I already know who this guy yeah, is. Yeah, you know who it is. And it's like t- complete full of shit. Mm-hmm. It even happened once with um, my nephew, too. He told a story, and he was trying to get a reaction from the crowd, and he, like, it was about our drive up, and I was like, I was on that drive. It was only me, you, and Grandma. <laughs> I don't remember that part of it. But uh, <laughs> he's doing it because he's had the crowd kind of listening to him. And he thought, hey, if I just make it a bit more of this. Yep, punch it up. I got a little bit more reaction. And then I'm like, uh, I don't like it. I like to be true to the story because it's like uh, then I don't have to try to make it seem real. Right. Because it's just real. The story I tell at the end of my set now, my closer, where I go to Winnipeg, that really happened. Every last bit of it really happened. Except for the punchline, <laughs> except for the pun- <laughs> the very pun, but the main no the the real thing the real the original punchline really happened right but like the te- the callback at the end is is uh, is just for the joke but the the real uh, punchline of that story where I said I accidentally went on a date and I have and this is the time we we're supposed to fuck like, I actually called my wife and said that to her. Oh, yeah. It's like we're at the point of the date where I think we're supposed to fuck. <laughs> I told her that, and then she's and she just told me like, "Well, you should probably tell her that you don't want to fuck her." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "That is a really good idea, Jay. I'm glad we had this talk because <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that way at all. No. <laughs> no, I was thinking maybe we should give this a shot. <laughs> well, so I'm glad we had this talk. I'm going to go do the colder. right thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's why I knew I had to call her. She would know better than me. Is this a bad idea? <laughs> my penis was saying something completely different. Wow. <laughs> yeah, my penis disagrees with you a lot. You, Jane, you and my penis are not on the same page here. No, no, they are totally in disagreement. But she wasn't even an attractive girl. <laughs> to be honest, I don't mean, I, God forbid if she ever heard this, I wouldn't want it. She wasn't my type. I would put it that way. That's a better way. She wasn't a drop. She wasn't like my type. She was very, uh, I enjoyed my whole day with the girl yeah. and, and I enjoyed dating her, but I didn't realize that I was on a date until it was too late. And then I was like, Oh, I think, I don't know if it, she, if she's got the wrong idea. Bad thing. Yeah. I think, you know, it's ha- what I've come to because of that movie set. Maybe I've got I'm like swimming in my own like confidence here. Yeah. But I, th- I think, uh, I think I'm handsome Maybe and, uh, color. I think I have to come to the realization that even as almost a fifty year old man, I got goddamn Van Dyke good looks and I'm I'm cursed with them. That's, that is your blessing and curse. It's blessing and curse. Of course everyone wants to be attractive, but I mean if you're trying to be a like a you know, a, a, a good husband, you don't want girls like uh throwing no. themselves at you. No, no. Right? 
You're all that, and that's what I'm probably going to have to deal with now that my acting career is taken oh off. Oh my goodness, I hadn't <laughs> even thought of that. Yeah, once people see you on the big screen, yeah, I'm gonna be like, uh, I'm probably mean that uh, People Magazine thing. Oh, for sure. <laughs> the first year, not on the cover, for sure. No, no, but you'll be in the top. What is it, fifty? Yeah, fifty or a hundred uh, most beautiful people in the world. I'll probably be in the first thirty or something. I was thinking fifteen, but yeah, you're gonna go first year because they don't know who I am. They're like, "Is that the guy from the podcast?" They're like, "No, nah, fuck the podcast. So. Forget the podcast. This guy's from this short film." You might not even be talking <laughs> to any of those little people after you make People Magazine. Oh no, all these diamond listeners that are still listening at the very end of this podcast right now. Yeah, you guys are, will all be dead to me when my <laughs> when my acting career takes off. For yeah, sure. none of you people uh, did, uh, will be uh, getting any regard except for Jen Husko. Oh, she is our. She will always be our one because I'm not going to give up that ten bucks. You might <laughs> if, if Jane can't make it to the premiere. You might offer that. You can come to the premiere with me. It was, oh, yeah. Husko's invited to all my movie premieres as yeah. part of her Patreon yeah. uh, uh, package. That's better than any hot tub video right there. I, I will say that. Uh, the next person yeah. who subscribes to Patreon can come to this year's Oscars with me if I'm invited. Nice. Hey? That's a hell of a deal. But if it's the Geminis, mm-hmm. right? No. No, no. You said Oscars. Oscars. Oscars, yeah. I'm not shooting for the Geminis here. I'm shooting for the goddamn Oscars. Why would you? And uh, I think it was pretty much a shoe in Yeah. Or what of the red carpet at the Hamilton Film Festival? That's probably more real- realistic. <laughs> <laughs> and the third person can go with you to cons? Yes. Yeah. The third Patreon, you come with me to con. Fourth one, we'll go to uh, Robert Redford's uh, ranch there awesome. for Sundance. Sounds like a time. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. That'll be the third Patreon. If I'm invited. And if I'm not invited, then you don't get nothing. Also, if Jane can't make it. Oh, gee, yeah. If Jane can't make it. She's been very supportive of my of me to this point. So, yes, I'll have to clear it by my she wife. She might get tired of the... Uh, this this pot has been unsweetened by Kevin Van Dungeon. <laughs> well, she may get tired of all the fame and glory and just want to remain anonymous, too. Oh, Jane, yeah. Like she might be like, go ahead, take uh, take the third or fourth subscriber. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Uh, my wife is the real famous person in our family. She is the most famous person because she's a, a like an eye doctor in the community. She, mm-hmm. she, she has like tens of thousands of patients that see her, and and uh, yeah, she makes sure they see her, mm-hmm. and uh, and she and like she, she has more than she can remember, and yeah. and so everywhere we go, they remember her. But she doesn't necessarily remember them all the time. She remembers a lot of them. One more than I think she could. Like I picture her just being very nice and letting on like she knows. Oh, she tries her best, yeah. yeah. I can, but I can tell when she's struggling because she like, can't remember. She's like, who the fuck are you? And it's like, remember like three years ago I had an eye exam. We had a nice talk. Yeah. You're cool. like, oh, you and everyone else. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but, but, the, but that, that happens to her everywhere. We go to dinner and like there's like a bunch of people stop to say hello and like, constantly they're you're just about to eat and someone's like remember that gooey eye problem i had yeah yeah they're not so, it, the difference is if she was like a like a movie star famous she'd get like pictures taken but yeah in her case she gets like uh oh um like yeah. uh this this uh, this problem or that problem if you're if if <laughs> you people, take a quick look at my barn cat eye like just oh yeah yeah, yeah. if you go to a family reu- family reunion or something like that like Everybody with eye problems will save them for the family reunion and then, like, uh, wait till they have a chance with, alone with my wife and just bring it up. What else would she want to do at a family reunion? Yeah, answer, like, I'm, I shouldn't even say that because that's not really, like, a true thing that we've ever talked about where she said, your family always asked me for eye problems. I'm just using it as an example. Mm-hmm. When we go out in public, everybody that's got an eye problem, and when they find out she's a, an eye doctor, they ask their eye eye problem question. Yeah. And she's so she's giving advice all the time just be glad she's not a dick doctor yeah well they don't ask people don't ask you for advice when they find out what you do for a living no (laughs) not a chance no and that's the thing like uh you don't have to put up with that she's got to put up with that yeah Yeah. uh they don't say like what how you do how you do this or that but but they they don't ask me no advice no like how do you properly uh make a podcast uh that uh 
one concurrent viewer listens to an hour after into the thing. Do you know what's going to happen, and, uh, though, shortly to you? What's that? People are going to be like, how can I act better? Act better? How can I become a better actor? Oh, you think this will become like probably just me giving an hour and a half of uh, acting advice weekly? Well, <laughs> all I know is you perfected the podcast. Kind of. It got boring after a while because it was so good. And people are going to <laughs> tell me a little bit about acting. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I had two people that said you shouldn't give up on acting completely because it, you're not, you're you're okay at it you know like you're pretty good at it and i was like oh i like uh i was happy to hear that and i wouldn't have believed them for a second but i kind of saw a clip and i'm like it's not bad like to be honest with you i thought it wasn't bad and i don't even like myself i thought like that didn't seem like i was like my facial expressions seemed kind of real it didn't seem like it does in my head right like overdone yeah but i do have an expressive face even when i don't want to it to be um I don't know. I don't know how this is going to turn out or if anyone will ever see it or whatever, but the experience has been really, it was really difficult, and uh, but it was uh, kind of cool to do. And I hated it the first two shoots, but by the third one, I actually kind of started to uh, get it a bit, like where I was like, okay, I get what I'm trying to do here. And then, so uh, it was, it was, it was good. I'm happy for the whole crew there too they did a good they're, they're doing a good job and yeah. getting better all the time and i like seeing that with my, with my friends when you can see them get better and do cool shit so look out for that movie whenever it comes out i'll let you know about it can't wait but i would never watch it <laughs> never no no i don't I haven't watched a drama to save my life i don't want other people's fucking problems That's i got my fair. own problems you know yeah i want some guy that's gonna make shampoo argue with conditioner and I want someone that's going to see, you know, like... I, 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 I love his movies. <laughs> you I know, fucking love his movies. I don't know why he gets such a shit deal. Hey, the guy makes silly movies that you can laugh at. Yeah. That's what... Uh, I'm like, I don't have a problem with that. That's what I want to do. I don't want to think about anything. I don't want to worry about anything. I don't even like the conflicts in those movies half the time. <laughs> you know Meet the Parents? Yeah. That movie drives me crazy. Everything always happens bad to the guy. Yeah. And I end up getting worried for him the whole time. And then something bad's going to happen again. It's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting more and more worked up the whole movie. I'm like not laughing anymore. I don't even remember if I was ever laughing. I think I was just really getting worried for this guy who keeps fucking up things. Yeah. And then I'm like, where's the laugh? Like where, who's laughing at him ruining everything? And then, uh, but I still love some of the lines in that movie. Like, uh, I have nipples, Greg, you know, milk the cat. You, can you milk me? <laughs> you know, like those are great lines and it's a funny movie, but yeah, it works me up. If it's too much problems, I don't really want to deal with it. That's why Slapshot's such a great movie. Yeah. There's no problems there other than Braden's a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was worried that maybe, uh, he wasn't going to get enough sleep before the big bounty game. But... Oh God damn it. He's called a bounty on that guy's head. <laughs> What do you, you expect? You can't do that. No. You just did. Goddamn Ogie Oglethorpe's coming. Yeah. Right? Yep. Oglethorpe? <laughs> that's, most fu- that's my favorite movie in the history of movies, and Paul Newman deserved an Oscar for that, for playing a very convincing Canadian. He sure did. Yeah. Subtle performance, one of the best. Yep. And uh, kudos to Mo, you know, who's a great character in that. Mo, I saw him in another movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You ever do that where you see... Someone from Slapshot in another movie, and I, the other day I saw Uncle Rico in another movie. I saw Killer Carlson in another in, in a couple of movies. I think really Dave Killer Carlson. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Dave. I I did remember. Yeah, I saw him in something. I want to say he was in the Brady Bunch movie, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, maybe. I don't know for sure though. But you know, uh, you know who, um, you know who. Uh, but Mo was the perv, right? Yeah, Mo was the perv. Yeah. Show more ass. I, you know, you know, uh, um, the guy who plays uh, Joe, right? Like, uh, what the fuck's his name? Um, the guy who plays the Joe McGrath, you know, the guy that runs the team. Yeah, yeah. He's the same guy from Cool Hand Luke. Yeah, well, Struthers we, Martin. I think what we have here is a failure to communicate. That's him. Yeah. yeah, he did all those movies with Paul Newman, and, yeah. and like, I it took me forever to figure that was the same guy. Like, I, I always thought yeah. there were two different guys. I saw. Um, the commentator, 
when the Carlson or the Carlsons, did you say the Hansons? Yeah. Make their debut. Yeah. That commentator was in Sixteen Candles, played the dad. Oh, really? Not Dickie Dunn. No, no. Like for, I I can't remember. That. Dickie Dunn's also in, in, uh, in a lot of movies, too. The the guy who wrote the newspaper guy. Yeah. I've seen him in a lot of movies. I think he might have been in one of those Sixteen Candles movies, like one of the grandparents or something. There. Possibly, yeah. I don't. I know that the guy that was doing the commentary when the Hansons made their debut. No, it, when they were playing it, I think it was Peterborough. The guy with the wig, the the main guy that does the radio show. No, there was like the opposing teams commentary. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he played the dad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, Sixteen yeah. Candles. Yeah, yeah. Molly Ringwald's dad. I can. Yeah, I totally. I t- yeah, totally. Yeah. Can see the guy now. Yeah. yeah. And the guy that pissed himself is from Tilsonburg and he sharpened skates. He has the rental store, right? I guess so, yeah. Yeah. That guy. Uh, that He's guy. happy to tell you that story when you go in there. Oh, I believe it. I mean, it's got to be. I would be too. Yeah, me too. If I was in a movie with Paul Newman. Yeah, yeah. not this time. Just in a movie with uh, a Val Cole mostly. Same. Same, same, same thing. Yeah. She's like a young Paul Newman. <laughs> yep, she sure is. That's what I say. She She's like a young female Canadian Paul Newman, who does Mylanta commercials or Maylox or whatever. What is it? Metamucil? Metamucil. She shits good. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like a, like a, like through a goose. <laughs> Anyways, that's our show. That's right. it. We got to call it quits, Kev. We went too long. Okay. And uh, I got to tell you people, if you're listening this time, and I don't know who you are, you sons of bitches, but I love you. And I want to give you a big kiss on your lips. Yeah, man. And what you got to do is give me a little bit. Of the old feedback. Tell me what you want to see. Tell us what you want to do. I will do it. That's how desperate I am. So give us some at live from the Dutch L at gmail.com or give me some Instagram message or Twitter, any of that, that stuff, uh, Facebook, that sort of stuff. Or you can uh, um, just uh, shout at me, I guess. <laughs> Smoke signals. Smoke signals. Do whatever you want to. Tell us what you think, what you want, and we'll do it. And just tell me who you are. That could be it. Just say, hey, I'm so-and-so from this place, and then I'll know where you are. Because I am looking for couches to sleep on, so I can go tell jokes all over the world someday, Mm. and I might be yours. And until next week, thank you, Kevin, for coming in. Anytime. And until next week, everybody, I will see you, NT. See you next Thursday. Hit it!